Oh yeah, there we go. Now it works. Perfect. All right. Yeah, we see it. Yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. Okay. So, um, so my presentation is called More or Less, uh, which is about Sergei Svichenko's work of deconstructing photography. Um, and I'll, of course, tell you more about who uh, Svichenko is. Um, uh, but I will start out with a few words of his own, I think, when you're so privileged to be working with artists who are actually still alive, it's, um, it's quite important to also share their voice in a presentation like this. So I have a few words I want to share, and it's just what's on the screen right now. It is not the documentation of a dream picture, but rather the filling out of time, the small collagic ideas. And that will lead us on to the program. Now, I know I only have 20 minutes, maybe less, because I was fiddling with the sharing of the screen. But nonetheless, it's an ambitious program. But we will, we'll just see how it goes. So first maybe of, if, uh, I'm sorry, maybe if uh, audience will be passive again, maybe you will have not 20, but like 30 minutes. So just enjoy. <laughs> oh yeah, now you're giving me a bit of uh, anxiety here that I have to fill out all of 30 minutes, but I'll, I'll do what I, I'll see what, I'll see how it goes. But okay, I'll first talk about Sagis Vichenko, then I'll go through some works, uh, some of the more formative series, I would say in the latest production, and also open up to some uh, very recent projects, uh, which could be quite interesting to, to share in this forum. But just to jump straight into it, this is Sergei Svichenko. Um, and he's born in 1952 uh, in Ukraine. And he's one of today's most, I would say, influential collagic artists, also working with photo montage. Um, his experimental approach merges art history with pop culture, politics, history, and science. And it explores the potentials of architecture uh, and its meetings with nature. Um, and it challenges, uh, I would say, limits of visual representation uh, by constantly seeking the ideal balance of deconstructing without loss of meaning, uh, which I think is quite a difficult task. Uh, through aesthetic surprises, or at least that's what I would, what I would call them, um, obstruction, so to speak. Um, new meaning is added and biggest narratives unfold in dreamlike landscapes, cityscapes, interiors and exteriors. Faces are removed, blurred, replaced and details are accentuated. The viewer is granted with the privileged gaze of the voyeur, but also of the spy's intuitive collection of details because there's usually a lot to look at in these collages and a lot of narratives will unfold from the combinations of photographic elements. Um, and, and now on to where we actually started a bit uh, with Sergei Svichenko and his background, because today he lives in Vibor, which is a, a town, a very historical town here in Denmark, where I'm also from. Um, and he has been living here in Denmark for 30 years or more. Um, and has been merging these, so to speak, these different visual cultures that he has been living in. He's, he's educated an architect uh, from Kharkov School of Architecture, and he, uh, he still has a lot of architecture, a lot of this constructivist, uh, spacious uh, feel to his uh, work. Uh, and then he's also, as I said before, he's also really merging, uh, merging art history with contemporary culture. He's been uh, nominated the best dressed man in Denmark now for several years in a row uh, by the, the fashion lifestyle magazine Euroman. Uh, so he's quite, quite a public figure here, known for many things, uh, but also for his art. Um, I would say to place him in an art historical context, I would say he draws pretty much from uh, uh, Alexander Rodchenko, uh, especially with the with the imagery, uh, with the perspectives on, on on architecture, with these very unusual uh, perspectives and angles of the camera, but also on English John Stetsaker, who is also quite known his collages uh, and his 
portraits and his uh, his his work with faces. Though we won't not be working talking much about Svetchenko's work with, with with the work that relates to architecture. Um, so I would say he, in a very flawless way, introduces references from the East uh, with uh, a hint of Western anarchism um, and with this sort of very specific Nordic uh, melancholia, uh, this very strange ambience that many Nordic artists, Scandinavian artists are presenting in their work. Um, then I will also talk a bit about Svichenko's some of the strategies he's been introducing and which has inspired a lot of artists uh, later on. One of them is the less principle, which is of course also something you see in architecture and design. Uh, less is more, uh, but the less principle where very few elements are changing an image completely um, and opening up new narratives um, without, as I said before, without any loss of meaning. Um, and then I will also talk a bit about his way of adding more optics. I, I call it multi-dimensional multi optics in a given uh, context in an image. Um, but let's just, let's just watch some works here, all right? <clears throat> so that's the first theme I would like to introduce. It's nature, culture. Talking of culture, we're really also talking about architecture. And that's two different uh, series. One is called Windows, another one is called Landscape Witness. And as we see uh, here, uh, this is uh, the first one. This work is called Secretly. Um, it's a photo montage. And it shows a forest, which is not exactly a forest. Actually, we are more in a meadow with flowers. It's summer. It's a black and white photograph. Uh, we see uh, strange windows appearing like orb-like uh, windows to this kind of dense forest. Um, it's a bit of a, an uncanny situation because in one way, everything looks very natural. It looks like it's supposed to be like this. It looks like there is a certain harmony in the image. Yet it's also a bit disturbing with these strange details. These looks into other realities that so closely related to the one we already see. And then we have this ghostly fingerprint uh, in the sky in this area over here. That adds to it quite, uh, that adds to this uncanniness, uh, I would say. Another one I would really like to, to show you, it's called Landscape Witness. Um, it's actually from, from the area. Uh, it's an old photograph originally from that area where Sega is living today, uh, which is called the Highlands uh, in Denmark, uh, with a lot of forests, a lot of lakes. It's been a recreation area, uh, area for generations now where people have been coming to get out of the cities, out of the polluted towns. Um, this one is quite interesting because it really very well shows the less principle. So we have this this rather large face, but with a very distinct feature of Svichenko's works, which is actually leaving out the gaze, leaving out the uh, some of the most recognizable facial features of a person, which would be the eyes, but creating this sense of anonymousness uh, in the image. Uh, and by merging these two very different uh, universes together, we definitely see uh, some of the references to um, to surrealism. Uh, of course, we have some Max Ernst, also Man Ray, definitely Man Ray, but also taking something very local, which is this quite familiar landscape to Svichenko, and adding to it this... Uh, mysterious female uh, jar uh, with the lipstick uh, connoting something completely different than the landscape we would see behind. It's a very unusual object, yet it works in this setting quite flawlessly. 
Then I'll talk about uh, photomontage and architecture. And I would like to introduce to you this project, Interbar. We'll see another way of using collages in the end of my talk. Um, this project was called Dream Machine, homage to Interbau 57. And Interbau 57, just to, to, to state a place, Sega is very often working with uh, specific locations and then he's making a whole series of merging different perspectives from this location. He's doing one right now from his hometown Bibor where you see many different perspectives on um, on, on the streets there, and people who live there will, will see it and they will see, oh, this is a new way of seeing our everyday city, everyday town that we know so well. So he's, crea he's creating these kind of obstructions in, in the very well known, uh, in a very well known setting for the people he, he lives between in Vibo, but also for these very iconic uh, buildings such as Interbau 57, which um, is this housing development project which was constructed in uh, West Berlin in 1957 um, as part of this international building exhibition uh, that was going on back then. And it was state of the art at that point. It was really, that was really where people wanted to live. It was with a lot of air between the, the buildings. There was like these park-like areas and you had these very, um, functionalistic uh, buildings letting in a lot of light built of concrete uh, very tall buildings so you got a view they were positioned well uh, so that it would allow the sun uh, and and the fresh air to enter the apartments etc and Sergei uh, made this here in 2019 uh, from his own original photographs merging again uh, uh, with the less principle in mind, uh, different uh, perspectives. Again, we have this multi-dimensional uh, gaze, I would call it, where you see these different perspectives added in one uh, context. And uh, with an element like this one, which has been positioned so that it follows this line here with the perspective, but completely breaking the perspective, uh, adding to it uh, this quite spacious, interesting feeling of being able to see more uh, than one actually would being in this location. Another one with colors is this one. And here we see a strange object entering uh, the image, which is this a uh, rectangular shape approaching here, uh, which is a very graphical, a graphic element to add here. Plus we see the windows here, which is a detail, uh, but it's been added to a facade so that the detail all of a sudden becomes part of uh, the facade and all of the architecture itself. Uh, and there you also definitely see um, how this artist has his background and has his roots in architecture. Um, he was also son of a very, um, uh, according to my knowledge, um, of quite uh, a famous uh, Ukrainian architect. And, and forgive me for my pronunciation now, it's, it's my Ukrainian and Russian, unfortunately, is a bit rusty. Um, but uh, his name was Evgeny Svichenko. Um, um, so you can definitely tell that you, that he has this, the architecture and the shape and, and the sense of building perspective, space, etc., in his blood, and that's really also showing in the collages. This one is also quite interesting. Uh, there an element of uh, the more organic material. Again, we have this clash between uh, culture, architecture, and nature. And then, of course, we have the name Dream Machine, which is really leading up to this utopia of, of modernist, uh, of, of modern, modern architecture as being uh, these places where life could really unfold, where people would be educated, where there would be schools, etc. Everything would be connected to these uh, new city centers that grew up in this era. And then I would like to show to some uh, images um, 
from two series. One is called The Windows, homage to Konstantin Melnikov, the architect, and the other one is called Legendary Peter Behrens, AI G Turbine Factory, which is really an iconic building uh, and quite a challenge to take upon yourself to, to interpretate this building through a photo montage. But to, to start with the windows, we have this, the building of, of the architect Konstantin Melnikov here, and we have different perspectives on it again. We have uh, details which are usually not connected to the body of a building, uh, as you would think of it as an icon, which this building definitely is. But then you also have the icons, which are these uh, hexagon shaped windows. Um, the colors are untouched in this uh, series, and it adds to these images quite a dogmatic, uh, I would say, realism. Um, and here we are inside the house, yet we also have the shape of the windows. We have the bed, which is very private. Um, and in this one, we actually have the shape of a window here. And we also have these very personal uh, elements here from some China. Probably uh, we have the bed behind, we have chairs, and we have a portrait on the wall here, plus we have the window. Um, the window in this series is really important because it also adds to this multi-dimensional view I talked about before, literally because the window works as this transparent membrane between the private and the public. Um, one can use the famous analogy on stage, off stage. Um, and uh, in this series, it kind of merges a bit together. We see the windows here, we see the, the iconic shape of them, yet we also see the inside of the house, the inside of the home. We have, in a way, both fears present in the, in the imagery here. And then we have uh, the legendary Peter Behrens AIG uh, turbine factory here, where we again have details. So we don't see the building in a whole. So if, if one Googles uh, the, the AIG turbine factory, one would find pick images of the building as it is as a whole. Uh, one would recognize it immediately. Yet uh, in Svichenko's interpretations, that is not the case. We see details. Uh, we see the cobblestone surrounded. Uh, we see parts of the windows which in this case has been turned. So it actually shape, uh, simulates the shape of a floor or a roof. And we see some metal structures behind, uh, which is also mere details that's not usually connected to this building, yet we see them. Uh, and in that sense, we're really offered with quite a privileged gaze. Uh, we see a lot in just one image. We don't get any answers. On the contrary, we are, uh, motivated to ask a lot of questions about what we see. We are motivated to start taking, um, sort of reversing the process of building um, or of making the, the photo montage. We are uh, reversing that, so to speak, so that we are kind of taking it apart, requiring, trying to place it in some kind of a system uh, where it original, originally belongs. Um, this one is also quite a good uh, example here. We see actually part of the, the, the roof. We have uh, this very distinct feature of the, of, the, of the hand bar here. And of course, we have the windows. Uh, yet we also have this very simplistic uh, sense of space. We have uh, this idea of architecture uh, as it merges, as our world is sort of changing uh, into... Um, into just another way of, 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 of watching it. This one is also quite interesting. Again, we just have one element which is added there. And we see the wall very close up on this one. And we can definitely feel the concrete and how this building sort of has a memory, a very haptic memory. It's been part of uh, Berlin for, for uh, almost, yeah, more than, more than, 
100 years probably, right? Uh, so it's it's quite an old building and it's been, it's one of the most iconic pieces uh, in the history of architecture of uh, industrial design. And, and yet we see this, we see the wall now, we see how it's all uh, rustic, we see how it's all raw, we see how it's concrete. Uh, we see the stones, that's the sand uh, that's, that has been built from. And we also uh, get this kind of sense of the smells, the sounds, uh, the history passing by um, of the context this building has been part of, which is kind of imprinted in these very uh, haptic, very tactile walls. Uh, again, we also see the window and then we have this less, uh, again, after the less principle, as I said before, this very strange element coming down like, like this here, which uh, to me at least is connoting everything from a stealth aeroplane really to, to a piece of modern architecture, to, to, some, uh, to some very technological uh, piece of design. It also looked like solar panels. It looks like a lot of different, different things. And then I would like to show to you a new series. It has not been published yet. Uh, it's, uh, it's just been made. Uh, Sergei gave it to me personally so that I could, I could show it for this presentation. It's just a few frames. Again, we are in the local area, even closer to Vibor where, he, where Sergei Svichenko lives today, uh, in a place called Gyan Baga, um, which is also this area very known for the for beautiful for beautiful nature um, again these photo montages are based on uh, Svichenko's uh, original photographs um, but adding to it not elements of architecture but elements of uh, the human body in details so and really just fragments again we just have we just have Few details to to attach to to lash onto. We don't have any facial features. We don't have any recognizable individualistic uh, features to clinch onto. We just have um, a shape of, of of the body and uh, interpreted um, by the artist. This one to me looks a bit like a Henry Moore sculpture, really, in in the landscape. And in a way, it's very organically placed there. Yet it's also very odd, and 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 it's a very odd, and it, it to me it's a bit like a memory. Uh, it's a bit like um, building memories uh, in a location. Memories are also often fragmented. Uh, they are often containing details, uh, imprints on the senses, and I think in this case we have some very sensuous uh, clashes between nature between the privacy it guarantees here we don't see anybody there between uh, the two elements that's been connected uh, on the background of the lake and the landscape here which is and we have the fingers uh, caressing the hair um, and again we just have this organic feeling of the hair we have the lines of the hair and we have uh, this very bodily, uh, meaty feeling of the of the fingers uh, uh, with the tissue and 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 very strong expressions. Fingers also has been used in art history, uh, all to, to expressive uh, tool to add to the whole to the whole scenery uh, some 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 more emotions. This one to me is one of the most interesting images in the Syria. We have this very strange egg-shaped orb-like feature, which could be the eye of a child. I'm, look, I'm thinking a bit about the German uh, surreal artist and photographer Hans Bellmer, who made a Syria called Die Puppe uh, in around 1930 way was depicting female bodies, uh, but they were actually not bodies. They were uh, prosthesis, they were uh, models, they were fragmented, they were, they were uh, very abject uh, elements in the, in the photograph, but, but 
and in the first in the first case one would just see them as as nude photographs almost pornographic of of, of women but then on the second one would actually definitely notice how how absurd it would be uh, this one is doing the same thing to me it's a very strange object uh, this childlike uh, element in the nature here and then on the other hand over here we have the woman we have this we have her hair and again it's like an imprint of an Im an imprint of a memory uh, to me it's a very mental image um, and it's somehow a situation i have already experienced um, this one is also very surreal um, and adds to the tradition you see in De especially in denmark in around 1900 and the 1970s uh, where uh, some rather mysterious um, um, elements are added to um, quite known uh, contexts uh, in this case, we have a flute, uh, which in itself is quite mysterious. We have in uh, Nordic uh, uh, folklore, there's this creature called Nuppen, which is this boy who's sitting on a stone in the lake and he's playing his flute. And he is, uh, and he's uh, luring kids to come to the lake so that they can, or to the stream so that they will, and then he will pull them down under the water. He's using the flute, and here we have the water as a black background. We have uh, the vegetation in the water, and then we have this the face or the head of a horse, which is also quite an ominous uh, element to place in this context, uh, especially shown like this from the front, adding to the whole uh, situation a very mysterious and absurd. Uh, an, an absurdness um, which really uh, attaches this very strongly to the surreal traditions in art uh, and, and definitely a place where Sege also, uh, Svichenko also belongs. And then I'd like to show to you a project in the making and where architecture and photography and photo montage is uh, merged in, to my knowledge, very original way. Um, and where photo montage, which is usually known to be quite a small format uh, for a more or less private reading, unless, of course, it's used for propaganda or commercial use. Um, in this case, it will be very big it will actually be an architecture in itself um, the project the working title at least is called the light box it has not yet been realized but i think it would be quite interesting to introduce it in this context um, so this is a prospect from could be any town really any city and on this house gable there is one of the images from the Interbau um, series we saw before, which has been blown up in a huge format so that it covers the whole house uh, and completely changes the space um, and the view on this street um, completely. Uh, the idea would be to make it as a light box, um, probably even interactive with sound. We have some more examples here, this one as well. Again, we even have uh, a neoclassicist architecture um, on this rather functionalist piece of architecture, this very traditional house. And here as well, we also have another one from the Interbahn. Opening up really how, um, how many um, possibilities um, the photo montage as a medium has um, so this was a very short introduction to Sergei Svichenko. Um, if you want to read more, I recommend you check out his blog, Close Up and Private, which has been, uh, which is quite well recognized, uh, especially in the fashion industry. 
and I'd also um, I'd also mention his gallery project, which we called Senko Gallery, which closed ten years ago, but which was quite an interesting uh, exhibition space, quite an interesting, uh, very uh, contemporary um, exhibition concept, quite original. Um, in Vibor, his hometown, where he had international artists such as uh, Yoko Ono, Yoko ono um, exhibit works. Uh, so, so that was, but so that was actually uh, my introduction. And now I'll be happy to answer questions if uh, if there is any. Otherwise, I would say thank you very much for your time. There are no questions, and it's kind of interesting and strange that Sergei Svyachenko is really amazing artist, and not much people know about him in Ukraine. <laughs> and uh, I checked our Facebook stream that only like uh, 18 people were watching you, so. It just like small amount of people who got to know about him. So hopefully they will spread the word because yeah, he should be mentioned. He should be known here. So one of the biggest collage artists in the world right now. And I think, yeah. I think really his collages are brilliant. He's also a painter. He's really working with many different mediums, but I think the collages is, 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 is quite outstanding. Yeah. So supposedly we need to wait for several of your presentations or of, of somebody else of his work. So then in Ukraine, like, oh, we have a great artist outside. Like, <laughs> let's maybe write about him. So, but thank you very much. It's kind of really interesting that uh, the work you showed, uh, you said that it's an uh, unfinished one. That one was uh, before the last one. Yeah. Somehow, somehow it reminded me those um, photo montages by uh, uh Zofia Redet from Poland because it's not like it's not totally creating new surrealist world like in Buterin or something but at the same they're like original objects like real but this reality is contradict it's very interesting so I think it's really interesting there's so much to dig into and he's very he's very much online so so there is a lot to look at also on social media yeah. so really it was really interesting for me Thank you very much. Uh, I hope that our audience uh, enjoyed it as well. So thank you. And uh, so it was uh, Christian uh, Kortegaard Madsen, curator and art consultant. Thank you very much. And then we are moving for our next uh, uh, lecture. Uh, Faye Dowling. She just disappeared. Faye, hello. So uh, Faye Dowling uh, will talk about new illusions, the construction of the image in contemporary art photography. So uh, Faye, are you ready? Can you unmute your microphone below on the left? Hello. Yeah. Yeah, so the floor is yours, thank you. We are ready to listen to you. Okay, great. Um, 